Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new episode of Dungeons and Discussions. I'm your host, Len Mos, and today we'll be talking about world building, particularly map building and the world building uh, kind of section of things. And that may have been a bit fast, but uh, <laughs> sorry about that, I talk quite fast sometimes. I'll slow down now. But I'm going to be using the program known as Paint.net. Now there are many tutorials online on how to actually download Paint.net, so I'd actually recommend you go search up one of those. I particularly want to be showing you how to just make a map or so, or not really like a, a town map or anything this isn't really really suited to that but this is more suited to you don't want to spend money on incarnate or dungeon painter studio this is a free application by the way so paint.net will be your go-to if you want a free application but it's also can be used as a substitute for photoshop and all that fun stuff just if you don't know how to make a general world map that you just want to have for your your players this is a good way of doing it so what I actually like to do is I like to start off by making a new document. You can do that with this button right up here, right? Or you can also go down to the file and there's a nice little drop down menu. I'll show you how to do it that way. So file, new, right? Cool. So what I like to do, and now I have a bigger computer, so this might be easier for me than others, but uh, we'll start off with about 5,000 by 5,000. I sometimes go 10,000 by 10,000, but for the because the purpose I'm recording, number one and number two, that this does take a while, I'm going to divide them by 5,000. Now, this doesn't take forever. This was just five seconds it makes the canvas. It's about 5,000 by 5,000. But what I want to do is I want to go to effects, render, and I like to render clouds out, right? And just use the normal things. And as you see, it's taking a while to render in because there's so many individual pixels, pixels, not pixels, blah, that needs to render out. And you can reseed if you want to, so it'll change where the clouds are drawn. But I just press OK, right? So now we have this nice background that's just, it looks like clouds kind of almost. Next step, I go to Adjustments and then Posturize. And then I, I, all of these are linked for me. They might not be linked for you. If you want to have them all be linked, just click on the little box on here. As you can see, when they're not linked, I can drag them all together. But if I click on Linked, it'll link them all by whatever red was linked to. So if I move the green, up to, sorry, if I move these down to 50, it should put them all down to 25 because it goes off whatever the first one is. Right? But drag them all down to zero, as you can see. Or I guess two is the minimum. Does that go down lower? Yeah, that went down to zero originally, but... As you can see, it goes closer and closer to stream black and white. Right this way you want. So I press OK. And like I said, this takes a while to do. But it's mainly rendering the clouds that take forever. So as you can see, that we have some like secluded shapes. Like right here. Oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Wrong tool. Like this tool right here. Or this one right in the middle there. That's a secluded shape. Or this one right here. Or this one right here. Or this one right here. In fact, you have like a chain of shapes right in there that are not connected. Like, let me show you an example of something that wouldn't be good for why you want to generate this. This right here, as I click on it, you can see that that's a lot of just different shapes. And plus, it doesn't look that natural, but it's all connected. It's very, very unorthodox to try to take something out of that and make a landmass out of it. Uh, this might be another big, big one. Yeah, look at that. Almost all of them are connected. Right? You can't really make a map out of that. Right? But we want something that's secluded like this, or I... Where did I see that, like, that little island chain that I thought was kind of neat? Was this part of it? No. Where was it? Oh, like right here, yeah. So this little thing... Oh, wait, no, wait. Where, where to start? <laughs> it's very easy to get yourself lost on this, especially when you don't zoom in. Oh, it might have been this. So you get like all of this over in here. Yeah. And then up into here. So how you can select multiple things is by control clicking. So if you can hold down control and click on it with your little pointer mouse, maybe it'll get up. What you normally want to do is you want to get out your little zoom tool, right? And zoom in so you can get all these little smaller blobs that are next to it that you wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So, I didn't even realize there's a small little, what will become an island right there, right? And I got another little one right there. Now, if you misclick, just press the back button. You might need to press the back button a little bit more than you were wanting to initially because, you know, just how the program works. So, if you misclick, it's not the biggest deal. It's not the end of the world. So I'm going to also grab all these little islands over here. And then... That's really all I can grab. I'm going to grab that island. You don't need to grab all the, the really small ones. The really small ones are going to become more of a hindrance in the end. So, like, I'm not going to grab these little small ones right here. I could if I wanted to, but... I'm going to decide against it. And I'll even go down here, grab this, and this, and that. Okay. I'll grab that too. And that. Cool. I have a pretty sizable world here actually so what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna go to a new file and it's going to take the maximum size that it actually can right this is the minimum size I need to actually fit all my pixels on there now as you can see 
what I might as well do is I might just make that black just so you guys can see better. But that is everything I have. Now, I might want to rearrange this just a little bit because as you can see, there's no way a mask really forms like this. So, what I might do is I might get rid of some of the, uh, the stuff that doesn't really work. So, looking at this little bit of land mass that I got, I am slowly realizing that this is not really the best land mass. Especially this, this center land mass, like look at how awkwardly shaped it is. No land mass forms like this, right? And, it, and then extends out over like that, yeah. No, so I don't really like that. But what I am left over with are actually two pretty, like this isn't kind of that feasible. So what I could do is I can go over here, right? I'm gonna actually unselect it, but I can perhaps go in there with a brush that's not very wide, maybe six pixels a little bit better. Right, cut them off and joop. And then we have no little need for this little peninsula that was at one point there. And I'm going to take the this again and go over the little bit of pixels that are remaining there. And cool. Now, this this can kind of work. And then, com yeah, combo with what we have down here. Especially right here. I might not want this, but it does leave for a nice little bay feature. So I think I will keep that. So what I will do, though, is that I will actually now take these. Right? And I'm going to be careful here. If I drag them up like that, you're going to see it's just going to cover everything. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to control C on that, or just copy, so you can just press control C for copy, but there may be another way to do it. I just click control C, max are different. I'm going to actually delete it though, right? I guess you can also use control X. But what I then do is I control V on another layer above, and then I can just kind of slide it perfectly in where I want, right? So I want this to kind of be in there, right? And this is kind of over a little part for my taste. This one I'm not really going to do it for though, because as you can see, it's not really going to overlap with anything, plus I'm on the wrong layer. When you're working with layers, make sure you're on the right layer, so the islands that are down here are on layer 3, these are on layer 2. So I'm going to drag these in a little bit. As long as it doesn't cover up that small island there, we'll be good. Uh, then I think this one, this is on layer 2 or layer 3. Okay, it's on layer 3. So be careful when you're working with layers, make sure you're using the right layer. I'm going to move that up into maybe here. I don't think that's a terrible spot. Uh, I think this island's kind of out of the way as it is right now. So, it's on layer 2, so just remember to make sure you're working with the right layer. And perfect. And I'm gonna actually... Hmm. That's really close to the top. I don't like that. I don't want my map to be touching almost the top of the thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna merge layer down from the layer 3 onto layer 2. And then what I can do is I can just do this. Or I can press Control A. Both work. But then I'll just click on it and then just press the down arrow a few times. And maybe just try to center it a bit. Uh, this is a bit better centered. So I'll do that. Okay, cool. I mean, it's not very centered, actually. I think uh, what I'll do is I'll zoom out. I'll zoom in a little bit. That made it not really uh, centered to me, but... Let's go down like that. Cool. Now maybe it's better it's time to get a better background. Now there's two ways you can go about this. Now, if you just want to make something very, very simple, simplistic, this is what I recommend doing. I recommend just going over to a nice little blue color. That's like a nice ocean blue, and then just paint bucket this. Now... Here is where my <laughs> my artistic kind of whatever divulges, right? I'm going to actually go in here to these little land masses. And you can expand and contrast these if you wanted to. I'll show you how to do that quickly. So if I want these to be a little bit bigger, I basically take the area on the correct layer, of course, and I do that, right? I don't really want to do that. Furthermore, I might rename this background layer to uh, ocean layer, right? That way I know the ocean is right there, right? And I'll call this... Uh, land layer. That way, when I'm looking over here at the at the layer map, I quite know I know exactly what I'm looking at. Okay, cool. Next, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna make sure I'm on the right layer. I'm gonna take white because that's the color of what the land is right now. I'm gonna go over to all these little pockets. I'm just gonna search for them. I don't really like that pocket or that pocket. These really small pockets don't really look good on a big map. Like that's fine. There's no pockets there at all. Sometimes even these don't look amazing, but I think one or two of them every once in a while where like, this doesn't really look, it's not going to look amazing. Maybe putting one in there, that'll look a little bit better. So you're going to, oops, see, I didn't mean to do that, but you're going to want to do just a little bit of a cleanup where you can. And as you kind of come to grow with the style, you'll realize that like, this isn't going to look good unless I make a big opening here, but I prefer to have more land than sea. Personally, I, I feel that um, it's a lot easier to run a game, a TTRPG, on land than it is on sea. I have played a Wind Waker style game before, kind of, if that's what you want to call it, and it worked fine, 
but I had to have the right group for it, and there wasn't a lot of counters I could do on the sea, especially with, um, they were on a small little stale boat, so, yeah. So this is a nice little spot where you're definitely going to want to do that in. And it's okay to have lakes and stuff too, but you're, generally you're going to want lakes, they're going to be big. Like, this is like an awkward feature up here. Do I keep this? It's kind of like a little inlet. I don't quite know, but generally if you're going to have an inlet, what I find is having a slightly better or bigger opening helps a little bit. So maybe just get rid of that. Those three. Ooh, maybe that wasn't correct. Uh, easy way if you just want to get rid of something completely without pulling out the eraser, just doing that. I think that'll work a little bit better for an inlet opening. Yeah, that, that was good. Um, so come over here. This is another little awkward feature we got here. Can you keep it? Um, I'm gonna get rid of it. Obviously, you don't have the, exact, have the exact shapes I do. I don't really like that. I don't really like that. What I recommend doing is going to do maps. If you want to do like lakes and stuff on these maps, do maps. That's also kind of an awkward shape. Have you caught that? That's not gonna look well. So I'm gonna cut that. Like that. Okay, cool. So now, let's uh, let's go here. I don't really like that little shape there, but uh, I'll get rid of it. I'll get rid of that. Okay. Do we have any other little extremities that are kind of really awkward? Ah, uh -huh, yeah. This, this looks really weird here on the shore here. I'm gonna cut these out. I don't quite like that at all. And I think the northern landmass is good. These are good examples of lakes. They're actually appropriately sized. I'm gonna keep them. Right, they're, they're they're quite good size. Sometimes when I do when I do like like taking like an eraser, it's really big and just doing an awkward shape. So let me where's something where I got pretty big amount of size, but I can work with. I'll go down here. This is a little island, perhaps. Take the eraser and then maybe do like a, a thirty, and then I just do something like that. A little bit more sporadic and not that big. Now maybe I go around the, not fifty five. I go around with something smaller later, it's like a five, and kind of clean up around the edges a little bit. You know, make it a little bit more sporadic. I don't really like that. Generally, what I like to do, but that's if I really need a lake somewhere, that's what I will do. I generally like to take a shape like these. Right, and make them a little bit more um, bigger. So the easiest way to do that would just be to take the uh, the blank area, right, which is right there. Control C, Control V, paste it down, and then you can expand it, and it's going to cover over the white. So copy pasting is one of your one of your best friends. And again, there's a little little dot there that I don't quite like, so I'm going to take the and it's going to cover it up. Oh, my own layer. Or, I, I think I copied a blank. Why is that not working? Oh, because I'm inside the selection down here. That's why it's not working. Make sure you keep track of your selection, guys. So as you can see, for the most part I've done it. This northern area, that's a good lake, that's a good lake. That's just an okay lake. That's an okay inlet. Mainly what I want to clean up here. Because I zoom in really close, I'm not going to see anything other than like right here, I think was the really, really terrible place I saw up here. And there's like I can probably live with, but when you have like just one little dot of water, it's not amazing. Sometimes if you want to zoom in on a specific area, it's good to do that. Just kind of take it and boom, then you get something like that. That's a little too much for me because you can see, look at what I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at right now. I'm like, what is that? Quite, wait, this is a great map. I probably should have said that. You guys have a little bit of a ruler, but yeah, um, that's, I use the great map because it makes life a lot easier, especially for pixel art and stuff. You're really into that. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this little thing over here. I'm going to try to get rid of that too, but I'm just going to do just a little more clean up work. As you guys can see, this is kind of doesn't need to be done, but it's kind of necessary if you want to make a map look a little bit nicer and more fine. Um, so you cross. Okay, that's not looking amazing. Or that. That's not looking amazing. Now, I'm going to go into just a little bit of tangent here about water, too. So, I don't normally do this. I normally do this afterwards. I decide where these are going to be, but I have pretty defined water features right now, right? But if I decide where do I want rivers, it's going to be a bit of a problem, especially with this battle map, and that's very pixelated. So, what, let me just show you, right? Maybe I want a river going from, I don't know, just somewhere from here out to sea. You're going to probably want to take the smallest brush you can for this. So if I do that and something like that, that doesn't look amazing, <laughs> I feel. So, if you can find a better way to do it, I do it better, especially because most rivers just don't go straight out into the sea. Most rivers do like a little bit of a, a mouth kind of opening thing. So, especially with how pixelated this is, I'm not gonna be able to do a very good job here. But what I can mainly, the only really thing I can think of is maybe doing like a thicker brush, like a maybe six here, going out like a, that and then going into the water and then maybe do a, a thinner brush like a two coming off like that and then doing like that and then you're gonna get like an okay delta feature uh obviously it's not the preferred but as you can see that doesn't look amazing like you could pass it definitely but for my kind of style i've developed here i don't quite like that so i'm just gonna undo that with control z Especially with just the blank colors right now, you can always come back and do these later. It might be better for you to do that if you really are interested in rivers. I'm going to even go back even further because I didn't like that nice little connection to the sea there. That awkward, it wasn't really nice, it was kind of awkward. Um, I'm actually going to go back up here because I did, I did this caught my eye. I'm not going to let this little, this little thing fly. Normally, rule of thumb, if it's less than a few pixels, don't bother with it. So, okay, cool. So now we have this... Pretty, pretty adequately sized map here. Now, how are we going to take this to the next level? Well, what I could do, obviously, is I could probably resize this. Actually, no, not resize this. I'm going to canvas resize this. So, canvas resize, or canvas size. I don't need all these pixels. I think I'm going to move it to the middle. That's where I'm going to take the anchor's going to be here. But 
I maybe want this to be a thousand by a thousand, and if I find that's too much, I will, uh, obviously... Okay, that's kind of cutting this off a little bit, so we can't do that small, but we can go back to the canvas resize and kind of use that as, like, a, an anchor point. So, maybe we'll do 1,200 by... I can maintain aspect ratio, but I think I'm going to do 1,200 by 1,200. So, boom. Okay. That's pretty nice, actually. I do like that. So, what I'm actually just going to do is I'm going to take this land layer and then just move it down a little bit so it's a little bit more centered. Perfect. I love this. Okay. Cool. So, I am now going to be adding land. So, this is the part I always get screwed up on myself. So it's going to take a little bit of this experiment yeah, experimentation. But what I think you'd like to do first, right, is, if I remember correctly, is finding like a nice little sand color. So, let me start off with like a yellow. And we're getting kind of close to a sand there. Maybe that's a little bit more sandy. Maybe you want more of like a red sand on your beaches, but... I think I'm gonna go somewhere in there, maybe just make it a little bit darker. And okay. Yeah, I think this is what our, our color is gonna be. You can play around with the color wheel if you want to, all that. But I think we're gonna be somewhere in there. And I'm actually gonna run to all of our land. Right for this particular style. Control A on it. And you're gonna wanna get all the small little islands. Oop, you don't wanna get the ocean though. That's bad. I, I believe there's a way to invert, and if there's a way to invert, you can just grab the ocean instead, but I don't remember the inversion off the top of my head, and since I've already learned it this way, it honestly be easier doing it the other way if there's a way to invert. I'm just not aware of the keystrokes to do it. Uh, but... So, what I would just do is grab all these. Now, I got most of the small islands. If I find a small island there that wasn't under the influence of this, I won't worry about it. But... I believe, oh no, so it wouldn't matter if I've done it anyways, but what I can do is I can get very defined things here. So these are all going to become sandy. I guess I didn't really have to select them. Sometimes, depending on the version of the program you have, it will just take everything that's selected and put it in there. This is more of a terracotta now that I'm looking at it, but I'm okay with that. Okay, now, we have a nice little thing here. What I actually might have wanted to do beforehand, I can go back for all the paint buckets hopefully. And in fact, maybe I didn't want to do all the way back there, but what I would do is I would actually take a um, copy of the land right now, since I do everything selected. I'll go back for the paint buckets. And then I actually have the white land layer there. I'm going to actually use it as a backup. I'm going to name the sand layer, kind of as a playoff of land layer. So, sand layer. Boom. We want, we want nice sandy beaches. And I can actually take this layer, and I can make them go away and not visible and stuff. This just... That little uh, checkerboard there shows it's transparent. That's just what that means. So when you save it as a PNG, it'll be transparent. So no land and no sand, right? So I'm just going to leave this here just as like a background. So as I know, if I need sand or something, it'll be there. But I don't have to worry about it very, very much. Now, what I believe it is, is you go over to... It's somewhere over here. I think it's in Stylize, if I'm right, actually. Now, I'm doing a lot for this, but I believe it, it might be Outline. Yes, cool. So it depends on how thick you want your, your shorelines. Maybe you want them to be a little bit thicker. And especially where you have lakes, this is going to be a big a bit of a problem, right? And how intense you want it to be too. So you can take down the intensity, right? So, uh, you know. So I might do a little bit less intense. And I might drag down the thickness a little bit. Because where I was, it was a little absurd. Um, might maybe up a little bit. That's pretty good, I think. Around eight. Okay. Cool. Okay, sorry, a little bit of a disruption there, but I'm now back. So, I believe where we left off, the sand layer is actually now all white. We're going to want to try to fix that. So, here we are. As you can see over here on this little layer map, the sand layer is now all white. We don't want that. Oh, we want to actually turn our tolerance down, though, to a point... Where it's not going to grab the sand, which is this is exactly at that point. So we're going to press. Um, we could just delete the, the outside layer first, and then we'll go to the inside layer, which isn't the worst it could be. So as you can see, we have these little land masses that are kind of, eh. So we'll know that that we're going to when we see the water underneath it. This one I actually don't have to do anything about because it's literally just a little sandbar out in the sea. As you can see the sand kind of came up far enough on it that we don't have to worry. Uh. This lake wasn't big enough, that's why I said you don't want to really use this method. 
So what we're going to do is we're actually going to get rid of the lake because the lake wasn't big enough. You're not going to see any water in it because of where the outlines form. Um, so yeah, but for land masses that are actually big enough, this will work. Um, we're gonna do that, do that. This lake was big enough, as you can see. Sometimes you just gotta kind of eyeball it and see if the lakes are gonna be big enough. This lake wasn't big enough, so I'm just gonna get rid of the set, the splotch of sand. Maybe you want to keep them to denote low places in the land, but I personally am not really a fan of that. Okay, so now. Okay, never mind, there's a speck on my screen. I'm like, what is that black spot right there? There's no black spot right there, though. So now, if I go to the sand layer, you're going to see, see, if I put the land layer up though underneath it, you're going to see kind of, hey, we still have a rough outline of where the land should be, which is nice. What I probably should have done, though, which I will do, is I'm going to keep the sand layer here, but I'm actually going to go back to where before I start erasing stuff over here. And again, I'm going to keep... That's right where I did the outline, am I correct? Perfect, I'm going to control, oh wait, I control T on that one when that was, so yeah. I actually can uh, make a new layer here, and I'm pretty sure if I do that. Yeah, okay, so I want to zoom out though, or it's not going to line up properly, so zoom out. Okay, cool, now I have an even more in-depth kind of, why is this, um, oh, I didn't keep it, god dang it. Okay, well now I have to go back and redo all of that, so that was stupid. Okay, so I'm going to actually do a di different thing here, then I'm going to... I don't want to do that. I want to, to um, duplicate layer. I'm going to get rid of that layer. So sand layer, we're going to call this sand layer trans parent. I'm just gonna, for both of them, I'm going to delete this and this, because we don't like that white splotch there, but I'm going to get rid of that. We don't really want the... Uh, that layer is showing up, but we don't have to. And again, I'm going to go through here. I'm going to delete all of these. Sorry that this is kind of discombobulated, but sometimes you got to play around with it. The, the program to get it to work properly. And again, this little spot up here we don't really want because of the sheer fact that it there's no water in it. It was meant to be a lake originally. So again, we're going to zoom back out. This is the real easy part. Is just click and delete. So just click on the white splotches and delete them. And then if... um. Just do that like that too. That would be probably an easier way of doing it. So again, we're. Oh, I clicked on the the sand there. I didn't want to do that. Delete the inside of it. Delete that. Okay, cool. So now again, we have a little backup layer though of where the land actually is. I'm probably actually going to duplicate this again. Not this layer. I want uh, this layer. I'm probably going to duplicate it. I'm calling it the sand layer. We're going to call this maybe grass layer, right? I'm gonna, these are going to be some grassy islands, right? So. I have a nice bit of white here. Um, the only thing I'm probably going to want to delete on these sand layers, again, is this. And again, on this layer, I'm going to want to delete this. Oopsies. Um, maybe the best way of uh, doing that would be like that. No, uh, maybe the best way of doing that would actually be to take something like that and uh, paste it there. And on this layer, probably like that. And this layer probably like that. Oh wait, I'm inside the uh so again on this layer like that. And on this layer like that. Just to get rid of it. Okay. So yeah, these this is all nice and green now. The only thing I could think of is maybe on these layers getting rid of these as well. So get rid of it on that layer and then get rid of it on the grass layer. Get rid of it on the grass layer, get rid of it on the sand layer. Are there any other lakes around that I have to be kind of particular about for moving forwards? Cool. Not really. Okay. So. Let's find a nice little grassy green color. I don't really like the green. It's a little too dark. Maybe I want it to be a little bit more vibrant. Uh, maybe a little bit more vibrant would be nicer. Kind of a really, really dark colors on a map don't like catch my eye. I think it doesn't look amazing. So I'm just going to play around the color a little bit here until you get something I'm kind of satisfied with. I'm a little satisfied with that. Okay. So grass layer. Hmm. Now, I could do this, there's a few ways I could do this. Now, the easiest thing would be, now that I'm on this grass layer, just, oh, that would be a problem. Why is that? Okay, what is going on here? Why is that weird? Is that because of the sand layer above? It might be. Hmm. No. What layer is this on? 
Grass layer. Okay, so it's just a white, uh, white box there because I was trying to get rid of that lake. Um, I could just do is I could just that and then get a um, maybe a little bit thicker of a brush. Boom, gone. Don't gotta worry about anything now. Okay, cool. I fixed it. As long as you can cover up your mistakes, it'll be easy. So. I'm just going to put these as green, because at least what I want the island to be. Cool. So we basically have the most basic... Ooh, I actually just got the outline there. You could, didn't realize you could do that. Air outline, because of my tolerance right now. So this is the most basic map you can kind of feasibly do. The other thing I could think of doing, instead of being what I did here for the grass layer, would be actually making another layer, and just dumping this whole entire thing on it. And this is kind of like an effect that I like to do. So if I just put this up layer, right? I actually go to effects... Distort, sorry, it affects noise, right? Add noise, right? You don't want that all much, all that much noise. You want your intensity and your color saturation to be kind of low, so I'll do maybe 40, 60, right? And then not everything is in all key difference, so maybe we'll do like an 80. I like to do 40, 60, 80 generally, right? And then what I like to do is I like to actually crystallize it. And you're gonna see we get a little bit something here. I'm gonna maybe push this up to 12, just a little bit, so the crystals are a little bit bigger. And you can make them as small as you want to, too. And then I put some dents in it, right? And that actually kind of makes like a little, a little pattern thing, but let's say I drag my sand back up over that. It might add a little bit more texture to your land. That might tickle your fancy. It might not. That's just an option though if you want to. I'm just saying that it's there. You can kind of see how the land looks like with it, but I am personally not going to. Sorry, that was the layer I wanted to keep. I'm personally not going to go through with that because I don't really like the style. Okay, so we've basically kind of mapped out where, you know, this little island chain is going to be. Right? So, now our next kind of idea might be, maybe let's add some settlements and some titles, right? So I'm gonna maybe add you here. I'm gonna add one for, I'm just gonna name it City Layer, right? And the good thing about these layers is that, like, say you don't want, um, you, maybe you don't, you don't want, like, the, uh, the map showing it grass and sand. So I can get rid of that, and that, and that, and then show that, and you just get a white landmass, right? Now that's kind of arguably a really stupid one, but if you just want to show this, which is, you know, if you just want to show this, that's nice. Um, and maybe you don't want to show the cities, right? And maybe you don't want to show titles. So when we go through saving this to a file, I'll show you what you can do to kind of, you know, change that. It's mainly going to be just checking this box on or off if you want that or not, right? So little settlements though. I'm going to maybe go over to the shape thing. You could choose a shape. I generally like to use these little stars because uh, the stars can kind of like represent like how um, how important the situation is. So if it's like a little village, I might do three points, four points are maybe for a larger city, five point stars like really important, six points like this like the metropolis, this the the most you know diverse place in the world. So I'm gonna maybe take these. I'm gonna take maybe not that color. I'm gonna go with black because black is the most standard on these maps. So generally, you have to actually make a size for them, right? And that's a, a transparent one. What I generally like to do is I like to actually go instead of that, or go here, I like to do a uh, filled shape, so right, get something like that. Now it's mainly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get like that, that's a relatively good size. So I'm going to take you actually, actually can I just copy it, or control X, hmm, control X seems like the working paint on that, but I can take it, right, and I could drag this around somewhere if I wanted to, so let's just say this, something right there, right, and might be something right here. And control C, I'm able to put one down here. So I'm just copy pasting it. And then I'll put one more in the world. So, okay, right, and then right there. Cool. Then maybe something that's a little bit more important, right? So I'm gonna go and set up a three point star, I'm gonna do a four point star. And I'm gonna make it generally the same size. So actually what I might do is I might just do this just for a moment so I can get like a size. That's generally similar. So is that point about the same size? That's about the same size. So I'm actually control C, X off the layer. Doesn't exist anymore, but I'm gonna just repaste it. Oh, um Yeah, be careful when you're pasting, I just realized, because um if you don't copy the right area, it's gonna just copy the whole layer, and then when you paste it on it's not gonna be good. So I'm gonna do that, control C, uh, X out of that layer. I'm gonna actually just zoom out a little bit. 
and maybe zoom in somewhere else so it doesn't like obsolete cover it up. But if I paste it right there, perfect. Then try to put place it as close as possible, but I don't want to cover up anything. So maybe put, put main settlement right here. And maybe, oh wait, I forgot to copy paste it. Control C, Control V. Maybe something that's a little bit more like that over there. And then I'm gonna say, just for the heck of it, because the top side of the map is really popular, although there's a lot more land up there. I'm gonna say, just for the heck of it, let's do one more shape. Let's do maybe the five point star, right? And again, I'm gonna do the same thing I kinda did, so it's roughly the same size. You might want them bigger too, that's also a stylistic choice, because if they're bigger, as you know, that might denote that they're, um, you know, a bigger city too. So, this is just how I do it though. And if these are roughly the same size, they're roughly the same size. I'm gonna just move, um, move you, perhaps, right over into here. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna move this below that layer just to make this a little bit quicker. And I'm just gonna merge the layer down. It always, sorry, other way around. It used to be, sometimes it does it the other way around. Whenever you merge down, it's the layer in the bottom. Sorry, I thought it was the other way around. Normally, it's the layer. I thought, I, I always thought it was the layer in the bottom that I took the name of. But I suppose it's the layer on, yeah, this layer. I thought it was the other way around, sorry. I thought it was the layer on the top that I took the name of. It's the layer on the bottom. So, cool. So now we have like a little, little settlements. We gotta give them names. Uh, let's, let's just make a map name layer, oh, yeah, name layer first. And. Generally, gonna want no font size. I think 128 is a font size, so we're gonna go with 128 here. So I like to just name it font, the font, uh, whatever. So again, I want to use the fonts. I tend generally like uh, Times New Roman. I don't know why, but uh, or Courier is another good one. I think I'm not sure if this one has Curio. I have Ninja Naruto on here, as you can see. Uh, so Courier is that on here anywhere? Courier new? Eh, it'll work. Uh, Constant? Yeah, actually, let's go with that. That's more like Constantinople Byzantine kind of feel. So it's 128 a size? 108 a size, sorry. So you can rename these layers pretty easily. Just click on them, double click on them, and then do that. Cool. So let's just. Maybe. We don't want to do it there, maybe, perhaps. Oh, I renamed the layer back to 128 on accident by going back. Okay, cool. So we're going to make find a nice little spot. Maybe there. And we're gonna, what are we going to name this? Let's call it, um. Uh, I'll, my, my personal homebrew rules would name Calamitous, so we'll just name it Calam... Calamity. Calamity. Cal cal Calamity. <laughs> just kind of play off my homebrew world's name just a little bit, so Calamity. And you could do, if you want to do, like actually go into Word and make some Word art and stuff, you could do that, but Calamity. It's the name of the world now. And I'm going to say something right here. These little four points are, you could easily step fashion these into a compass rose by taking a uh, one of these, taking a circle or an ellipse. Drawing out a little outline, then just doing something like that. You can easily make a compass ropes like that. I'm saying. Okay, so now we have a little that. We're gonna leave that on its own layer, just because if I want to take it away or anything like that, it's gonna be easier too. Okay, so let's do um, maybe uh, town name layer. And the reason why I'm doing this on different layers is because I might not want you know the town names to be visible on certain versions of the map. So it's a really easy way to do that. So I might maybe take town names down to um. 84. Is that what size I'm using? Yeah. And again, I like, to, I like to denote that in the uh, thing. That way, when I ever come back to it, right, or I add a new town, I'll know exactly what the font size I used was. And as long as I'm in this project, I'll always know that the, con the font is Constantia. So we're going to name these towns. We're going to name this... That's a little big, actually. Uh, maybe let's not do that big of a font size. Didn't realize it would be that big. Maybe we'll just do something more like 48. Let's, let's uh, take the... Uh, I forget what it's called when you change the, uh, the numbers order around. So, okay, it's a little bit more workable. This is just such a northern town that it's going to be hard to work with. But I think I'll name it North. North, uh, Northton. Okay, that's a little bit off screen, but I think if we center it, yeah, it makes a little bit more centered. And then what I want to do is I'm going to actually just take the whole entire thing as like a, a thing, and I'm going to just move it up there a little bit. Just to center it a little bit more. Now, if you just grab the whole layer, you're going to realize you're going to be moving the whole layer. So when you have other things, make sure you select the, the town name before you move it, or else you're going to end up moving the whole layer and everything's going to get messed up. So we'll name a few of these. Uh, I'll actually name the big one down here. Metro. And it's going to keep wherever you were, so if I want to do, like, starting from the left, I can do there. If I want to do start from the middle, I do the middle. And if I want to do it from the left, the left was also, or the right is also an option. So I'm going to call it Metro, because it's just the big city of Metropolis. I'm going to call this, um, this one down here. 
uh, ones. Just give them the little names. Uh, I'll call this one Eastwind. And I'm, obviously, I would center these a little bit more if I could. And I'll name uh, this one. Uh, what can I name it? Uh, C C wedge. I don't know. I'll name this one. Uh, deep, deep mine. Maybe there's a mine in the settlement, so they they named it for the mine. And we'll name this one uh, West Wind. After it's like the sister state of East Wind. Cool. So again, let's go through and just make these a little bit more, you know, representative of uh where they are. So these are just like in examples though. Obviously, I'm not saying you have to make your world exactly like this. You don't have to, um, you know, you, you, you're probably going to have much more, you know, fascinating names than I have. And your font sizes are probably going to differ from mine. That's fine. I'm just going for a very stylized map. Sometimes I like to do a position just just right because, as you can see, Sea Wedge and Deep Mind are going to have a very, very close thing. So I want to make sure they're not really touching so nothing can kind of get confused. And Outland's in a really awkward position. Do I want to put it above or below? That's up for me to decide. But the upside about doing this is when I put the names above them, right? If I really don't like where the names are, and I just want to have that little map with that, or if I don't even want to have the, the names or the civilizations on the map, I'm keeping that little bit of thing underneath it, where I can know exactly what it looks like underneath. Especially if you're really into the detail, which I'm not really much going into in this tutorial. Okay. Now. There is... How much more we can do? But there is other steps we can take. So, let's do maybe an island name layer, right? So island name layer, cool. And we're gonna go somewhere between 128 and uh, 48. So let's go maybe, uh, I don't know, but let's, let's, let's go like uh, 96 perhaps? Maybe a good one. Is uh, 96 an option, I believe? I'm trying to remember. 96, okay, cool. And again, for island names, Maybe I'm um, mainly just gonna name the chains in general, so I'll call this North Chain. That's a little big. That's almost actually kind of rivaling the uh, this size. So I think that's a little too big. You also want to keep yourself in perspective. So maybe we're gonna actually bump it down to 72 because I've decided that this map is a little too small for really really big fonts other than the name of the map. So 72. Let's do something that's a little bit smaller. So I'll call this North Chain. So I'm. I'm so these little collection of islands up here in North Chain, right? And then I'll call the, these, this little collection down here South, if I can type South Chain. Actually, I kind of like how centered that is already. You can also do, you know, press enter and go down. And I'll just name this uh, East Chain because I'm being very simple. And I'm not being very creative with the names today. I mean, I literally named the world like Clammy, which you know we can we can rename that too if we wanted to. I might have to get rid of it if I want to rename it. But either way, we could we could rename that if we really wanted to. You don't have to name your world anything like I can. I mean, literally, I have a a northern settlement which I took it's kind of this world is kind of inspired, but it's just a northern settlement, right? And it's not in this kind of style at all. This is more just like a flat plain world, but that the name is Frofridge, and I'm like, where did I get the name from? Because I wanted cold and refrigerator are kind of one and the same, so I'm like, okay, I'll take the fridge, and then I kind of want to make it like a little bit more Viking, kind of, so I, instead of fridge with the GE, I put an J on the end, and uh, I just put the fro there, because fro's for frozen, so Frofridge. So that's what I kind of got there. Now this is a fully functional map if you want to. The, the next thing you could do is if you want to really be with it, you can name the waters and stuff too. I was thinking about doing that instead of the island name layer, but this is already kind of getting kind of thing, or kind of like thick. So, I guess I'm doing the big names though, so you guys can easily see what I'm typing out. I would recommend maybe going smaller if you're not going to really <laughs> need that, but obviously, if you put smaller words on there, you can fit more text in there. So, I can name this like North Strait, and I can name it the South Strait, and I can call this the uh, this thing right here the East Pass, or something like that, right? So, that's really nice. And then, let's just settle one last little thing, is maybe borders. The other thing you could do is you don't have to do these all in black, you could do these like in the name of the, of the country they're in. So like, dedicate like each country as a color, so like, blue might be the northern country, right? 
So I could have had these all be blue instead of black or red for them to sell their country, but let's just do a simple little border fast, just for example. So we're going to say that maybe the north chain and the south chain are not fun, so border. Call this border layer quickly, right? So, boom. Okay. Let's perhaps name... Okay, we're going to get it like maybe red, right? Easy to distinguish, it's not part of the world, right? So I have this little tool over here for uh, lines, right? And we're going to maybe make it so that um, this goes right across, right? Okay, and if I want to actually, I'll make it completely straight. So instead of doing like a random line, if I just press the left thing, it's going to go completely straight right across the map, right? And I don't know if it's gone off the other side of the map yet, but I'm going to assume it probably has. Don't go too far because uh, when you click on your, your thing, you want your things to be in a relatively good spot. So maybe Salas Chain owns East Wind. So if I take this little thing, I can kind of manipulate it into a spot that is right there. And I'm also going to say maybe they they own they don't own this island over here. So I'm going to manipulate that so that goes in there. Now when I did that, it kind of covers up the the D and East Wind. And you can kind of you know do this however you want to. If you put it underneath this, I can easily bring it closer so it looks like they have a little bit more. And then again, I don't want it so they're missing that. And in the worst case, you have to do two different lines. But I can move this one too. I can move the other end wherever that might be. So if I maybe bring this layer name above it, you can see well, this one, or this one. You can see like the words still. And you can see, obviously it's a little bit more telling of where the border is, but cool. And then you can get into really intricate things like maybe that borders that little stretch of water right there if you want to really put time into it, but I'm just being very simple. So cool. I think we have a very, very just generic fantasy map that you guys can use. Now, there is more advanced techniques right now i don't know if i want to sell them in this video or do another video but i think for for now i think i'm going to end it off here because this has been a pretty long video so far the only other thing i could say is showing you how to save it so i'll be right back with that okay i made a nice little folder for the uh the maps so as you see when you save it it's gonna be pdn i'll show you how to get here so you just go file save unless you already have a save as so now i'm here in this folder if I, I can save it as untitled but PDN if I want to, but I'm just going to name it map.pdn, right? Cool. Now if I ever want to work on this again, I do have it saved here. But, now let's just say I want to save as a PNG, right? I can save this, save as, right? Save as .png. Cool. Now I have a PNG of it. This will work on anything. Except for maybe certain certain devices. might not. Get, but this is all one layer now because I had to flatten it to go through saving as a PNG. Right? What I might want to do instead right and flying layers that aren't visible won't be visible i should just mention that because i saw that at the corner of my eye maybe i don't want the map name or the uh, maybe i just want a straight up bland map i guess file save as i could say i can save as a pdn I'll, I'll name it as map labelless right and i could do a uh, file save as if i wanted to also as a pdn or the png i like to save as a pdn and a png so i can always go back and rework on them if i need to so i save it as png Maybe this is what I get to my players, and then I slowly kind of manipulate as we go forward and add the towns and stuff back on so I can open up, if I go files open, I can go over to this one, or maybe I want the, P the PDN, so file open, the PDN, right? And I technically don't need this anymore, I can get rid of that, I don't, don't need it anymore. So that's been open this whole time, I forgot about it. I want the PDN, okay, so maybe I want something very specific off of this layer on that map. So I, maybe I want the island names, right? Because the players have finally discovered the names of the islands, right? I can just go boom, easy. That's all I had to do, just control C, control V. That is the advantages of using this program. You will always be able to, whatever you want to, very quickly and easily make the thing, and you can send the PNG right to your players. You can put it on your virtual tabletop, you can print it out and bring it to your IRL games. It's very, very easy to learn this program, and this is just the bare basics. Uh, next episode is going to be a rather short one. But it's just going to be making your map look a little bit more embellished. Okay? So, I will see you guys then. Until then, goodbye, Sinjo, and bye.